Hello, it is Julie Berry with one of my Bible studies. I haven't done one in a few months and it's time. <laughs> I do this for my mom. She really loves them and a couple of people like them on the side. So I'm just going to make another one. <laughs> I hope you like it. I do them for myself too. They're my Bible studies. So I'm just going to share a little bit. And if I had more time, I would do these more consistently. And I'm going to try to do more this summer because I really love doing these. So this topic today is promises to stand on when we're going through troubling times. Raise your hand if you've ever gone through a troubling time. Yeah, I mean, we all have. Um, life isn't perfect. As a believer in Christ, we know this full well. It's not roses and sunshine. The difference is that we know where our help comes from and we have hope in Jesus, right? And Jesus even said, in John 16 33 in this world you will have trouble but take heart for I have overcome the world and if we are believers in Christ and he lives inside of us and he has overcome the world that means I have overcome the world too because he's inside of me and I can't tell you how many times a day I say the scripture, Philippians 4, 19, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me all day long. My mind wants to sometimes get into a funk that says, great, this is going on again. Or what else is new? You know, we can really slip into these sarcastic <laughs> ways of thinking when we get into situations or face troubles, right? And we have to renew our mind with the word of God. I mean, every day, because <laughs> it helps us. I mean, no one's perfect. We all get into that natural state of thinking sometimes when we're feeling discouraged or challenged with troubles and tribulations and trials and hard times because, well, I always say this. I'm going to write a book. <laughs> it's going to have so many testimonies of what God has done in my life. And I mean, you know, a lot of you who watch this, you don't know me, maybe you're watching on YouTube, you have no idea who I am. And some of you who know me currently might think, well, she seems pretty happy. She's got a nice life. She's got a great husband. She's got these cute pets. She owns a business. Yay, Julie. You don't know my story. <laughs> you don't know what I went through to find myself in this place in this season of my life. And I don't know what I'll face tomorrow or the next day or in 10 years. And none of us do. That's why we have to walk day by day with our Savior who we trust and we know loves us. Okay. So the first um, thing I want to say about troubling times is they happen to all of us. And they ebb and flow. We can't guarantee what tomorrow holds. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew 6, 28, probably <laughs> don't worry about tomorrow because we just have enough troubles for today to worry about, right? And we're not supposed to worry. Be anxious for nothing but in prayer and supplication, present your requests to God and the God of peace will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is I have all these promises I've loaded into my heart to just ooze out of me when I need them the most. And I I am not as consistent these days as I used to be in less busy times, but I'd like to make a habit a couple of times during the week in the morning to just crack this open and put some promises in my heart. In a, in a perfect world, <laughs> I would love to do that every single morning. It's just not happening right now every single morning. And I do what I can, okay? And that's what we're all doing in this life is what we can day by day with Jesus. So the foundation of love is trust and the foundation of trust is love they go hand in hand if we are going through hard times and we have hope and security and knowing that God loves us and is watching over us and is going to help us through the troubles and through the hardships we can stand firm on that foundation of love and trust that our father God has our best interest if we don't have that foundation laid in our heart of perhaps a revelation of his love for us it's hard to trust somebody we're not sure of how much he loves us even if you're a believer even if you followed the lord many years of your life your whole life if you're not really sure about how deep that love is that he has for you 
and it's easy to get into worry and panic like I've got to do this on my own and if I don't look out for myself who else is well he is he's going to make a way he's going to provide I speak from currently facing some big huge mountains and you know it's challenging but my trust is in the Lord it's not in my own strength good heavens <laughs> I'm tired. I don't have a lot of strength and not my great ideas because my great ideas fizzle out soon and then I have to come up with new ideas. So I really have to ask the Holy Spirit to help me day by day in, in providing me wisdom and leading me across the path of people that I can glean from and showing me scriptures that can enlighten my heart. Um, to follow his direction in which what I should do Lord what do I do in this situation tell me what to do I don't go to a bunch of my friends and ask them what I should do I really seek the Lord on this and he speaks to my heart it's not to say that we don't have godly friendships and God can use our godly friendships to help impart some wisdom if we really just don't know the right way because there is a Proverbs that speaks of it's good to seek out counsel um, from really godly relationships and people who are close to the Lord they won't ever know the right answer for you though that's really important for you just to um, go into your heart and have some time with the Lord and really seek that out so what are troubles okay this is a real broad sense of the word trouble we're not going to narrow it down and pinpoint each one today but we're just going to cover the whole umbrella <laughs> of what troubles are they can be health troubles they can be financial troubles relational troubles I wrote this down somewhere career troubles, um, transportation, you know, just all of these things. It's just a big umbrella. They, and financial can really cover the whole housing thing, the transportation thing, the career thing as well. We need money to live. <laughs> You know, it's just a part of life. And we have relationships. We have relationships with our parents, with our extended family, with our kids, with our spouses, with our closest friends, with those who are closest to us, with, you know, our outer circle of people that we work with every day, um, out in the world, you know, people we bump into. So we're always dealing with relationships with people and um, we're always dealing with careers and, you know, what are we doing with our life? So we have to find direction and trust in the Lord to guide us in this process. And so the biggest thing <laughs> that I want to emphasize right now is that we should always know that we're going to walk along and have really great moments with the Lord where we're just feeling really awesome. And, you know, we had a great, great experience with this or that or the job is going great or relations are relationships are going great or the money's coming in you got the great job just got a new car all that good stuff if that's going on and that can make us feel good right and when we have negative experiences and troubling things that happen to us it can make us feel bad it can make us feel hopeless it can make us feel depressed it can make us feel sad it can make us feel lonely and we have to really fight those off we have to fight those feelings off because if we walked day by day in our walk with the Lord based on how we feel every day, oh, for goodness sakes, we would be a roller coaster, wouldn't we? <laughs> and so walking with the Lord is ever studying our heart, our mind, our will, and our emotions, and just leveling it up to the Word, right? And, and just asking the Lord and asking the Holy Spirit, let's, I want to renew my mind in this area. I really want to go to this default and just kind of just get triggered or have an anger feeling about that thing but I don't want to feel that anymore I want to ask you what you would feel about that situation because we don't have a savior that can't relate to us he was human he was flesh and bone just like us and he faced every trial temptation hardship that we faced he knows what it feels like to be human and struggle with these emotional things and our emotional reactions to circumstances that happen to us it's normal it's good to feel emotions that's how we know we're a human <laughs> you know, and all sorts of emotions, but we don't let them regulate and dominate our lives, right? We really are going to immerse ourselves in the Word. So the first thing about troubles and standing on the promises of God is just remembering that He loves us. And oh my gosh, I had all these scriptures I want to read, and I'm going to read some of them, but not all of them. I wrote down so many, but here's one I really do want to read. So those hard times come and it's just part of being on this earth 
and on this planet, <laughs> you know, we're living in a fallen world where n bad things happen. And they happen because of choices we make, other people make, free will. Some things are bad that happen just because the enemy is around, right? And the God of this world, um, the rulers of darkness and the principalities of this air. And I'm going to read Ephesians 6, 12 through 14, which says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I'm reading from the Amplified, so I have all these extra words contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, and against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. Having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, wind is blowing, earth is shaking, water's pouring, stand firm, don't back down, fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. Man, I love the Amplified Bible, don't you? Stand firm, stand firm, put on the whole armor of God. My pastor gave a really awesome series, I think last summer about the armor of God. Um, and and it was it was powerful and really talking about the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and shodding our feet with the gospel of peace and how all of these components can really just help us to stand against the arrows that come against us, you know. I could be walking along having the best day ever and then this arrow will come at my mind and I'll have a thought like, where the heck did that come from? <laughs> out of left to field. And of course, I'm very, um, I'm acutely aware of it because I know the voice of my father. He would never say something like that to me. And if that is not a, it's not a good and uplifting and encouraging thought that fills me with love and acceptance and peace, well, it's from the devil, okay? So, and I resist that by just saying inside of my head, if I'm out in public, I'm really not talking to myself too much, but sometimes it's really good to speak out loud to that. If you're in your car and you know what, I rebuke that. I'm not thinking that. That is that is not from my Lord. That is not from my Father, and that's not who I am. And so we really have to take charge against that. We have to remember we're loved. If we know that we're loved and taken care of by our Heavenly Father, we're not going to be afraid of tomorrow. We're not going to be afraid of where this car is going to come from or how we're going to pay our bills or if we're going to get that job. We are going to trust that our Father will bring that to place. You guys, I don't want to spend like a lot of time talking about my past experiences, but when I was single mom in it for like 11 years, no help from anyone no family to help me. I worked three jobs and I had eviction notices on my little apartment, feeding my kids ramen, choosing electric bills over Christmas presents. I mean, that's how hard it was for me in those times, you know, years ago. And I was, I was working those three jobs and struggling to make ends meet. But I, my kids remember that we would just sit around our little rickety <laughs> kitchen table and we would just pray together and we would trust God and they would just witness so many miracles happen literally day of you know this taped eviction notice on my apartment door what are we gonna do well God's gonna come through I know he's going to and he did <laughs> and I, I mean like literally money in the bank that wasn't there 10 minutes ago you guys okay like crazy crazy stuff um, had a couple at church that didn't know of my car situation because I didn't really speak to anybody about this. It really was a sudden thing where my car broke down. My kids were really little. And this family said, the Lord put it on our heart. We would just have a car sitting in our garage. We want to give it to you. And I'm like, thanks God. <laughs> so I, I, and I was praying in my heart when this happened, well, Lord, you're just going to have to come through because obviously I don't keep enough around here. And this, these were the days raising my kids and I'm just r really living by faith every single day. And so I speak from experience. I don't speak from, you know, this really comfortable place of living where I don't face hardships. I face things that I'm challenged with right now that I'm really trusting the Lord with. And I'm choosing not to let my heart get filled with anxiety. And, and that's, that keeps me at peace. It does because I'm not in control and I know God is, and I know that he leads me and guides me to make the right decisions to help things fall into place where they need to and to give me wisdom in all circumstances. So I just want to be encouraging and speak from my heart and just let you know that 
I have been there. <laughs> I have, I've had some really, really hard times and, you know, and, and that's just, just scratching the surface of things too. Like it goes a lot deeper than that too. And it goes a lot farther back, but through God's goodness and through God's faithfulness and seeing him time and time again, come through at the final minute, never too late never too late, never panicking. And we can feel a natural tendency to panic and to be afraid, but we don't have to be because we know we're loved. And I've had an overwhelming sense of, you know, revelation in my heart about how much the Father loves me, um, you know, over the last couple of decades, for sure. It took me a while to get there. You know, I wasn't always in a place where I felt like God was proud of me, that God looked at me adoringly and cherished me. I, I thought maybe I'm falling short, Lord. I don't think you're proud of me. I think you're looking to bam, <laughs> you know, crack me one. And it, it really, it, it had a lot to do with where I was at that period of my life and, and just really opening up my heart to go. I just want to know how God really thinks about me. I want to know, you know, the truth about the gospel and, and what does it mean to be one in Christ and what Jesus did for me made me a part of the family, part of the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son. We're all one happy family and I am accepted. I mean, I didn't even include this in my notes here, so I'm going to get back to my notes. But having that foundation has caused me to have a lot more peace um, in those circumstances that I have faced and I'm facing sometimes even currently in this season to know that he's got my best interest. You know, he really loves me. Um, he loves my household. He loves our kids and he's leading us and guiding us. John three sixteen, you know, says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that if we believe in him, we will not perish, but have everlasting life. I also want to read another one that is just so beautiful, you guys. There's a couple. I read this a couple of weeks ago and I loved it so much. I put like some of these scriptures on post-it notes on the back underneath my phone case so I could look at it every day. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait confidently and expect the Lord. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord from Psalm 27. Yep. I mean, that one's packed full of a lot, but I love the, the verse in Psalms um, twenty seven thirteen that says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We can feel a sense of hopelessness sometimes when things just don't work out, when the unexpected occurs and we're facing something that's just absolutely life shattering. But even in those darkest of times, when we're walking through the darkest valleys and we have no idea how we're going to even make it through, trusting that God is with us, even in those pits of despair, comforting us and holding us close. We don't always have the answers, but we can know that our Heavenly Father is with us, that Jesus is standing with the, us in the fire, and we are going to make it out. Having that hope, knowing that we're going to make it out on the other side, and that we are going to see good days, that's a place to keep your heart just one day at a time. Sometimes maybe you have an hour at a time to think that. Maybe it's so difficult that you're not sure if you can even think that tomorrow. You're just trying to get through today. That's okay. Think that day by day and just hour by hour, <laughs> minute by minute, put your trust in Jesus because he loves you. There's another scripture because it's all about the word, okay? It's not about what I'm saying. It's about what he says. This is a bit much, but I want to I wanna read it because it's really, really powerful. It's Colossians 1, 19. It's not, a, it's not too much. It's just a little paragraph here. For it pleased the Father that in him, Jesus, that in Jesus, all the fullness should dwell. And by Jesus to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or heaven, having made peace through the blood of the cross, and you and me, who were once alienated 
and enemies in our minds by wicked works for our sins and our sinful nature. Just being born into this world just qualifies us. Born into the world, sinful nature, right? We needed Jesus. We need him to purify our hearts and, and make us righteous. And all we have to do to get that is just believe that God sent him and that he died on the cross for our sins and that God raised him from the dead. That's it. Our salvation comes through believing in those things and then we are made righteous. And now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. He doesn't see our sins. He doesn't see our faults. He sees us holy and pure and righteous. And he's helping us if we're struggling with sin. His grace is enough, but he's helping us walk day by day so that we can be free from those entanglements. Pouring ourselves into the word will help us see those days. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven and earth, we are not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Remember when you first became a believer in Christ and you got so excited, whatever age that was for you, I remember I was just a 10 year old kid and I heard the gospel, the message, the very short gospel message from my youth pastor. And I got so excited in my little kid heart. I want that. I, he, Jesus sounds awesome. I knew Jesus. I grew up a steady Lutheran in Rosemount, Minnesota, <laughs> you know. So I, I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know him personally because it was very much, you know, religious um, traditions and things. And it was less personable. It was a more far farther away but I was learning about Jesus and I always loved the stories I learned in Sunday school as a real little kid but really just hearing the gospel preached like that got my heart ignited and when I asked Jesus to come into my little girl heart I really just fell in love with Jesus and I could feel him with me all the time and 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 constantly through all the seasons of my life, even when I wasn't walking with the Lord in some difficult years of my youth, I just knew that he was never going to leave me or forsake me. And he was always there and he never left me. He chased me down. <laughs> he wrangled me back. <laughs> and, and that just, it brings me peace to know that he loves us no matter what. So from a foundation of love, knowing that the Father loves us, knowing that the Father loves you and he's going to take care of you, he is going to guide you and lead you in your heart. So take a breath and just rest, rest, peace be still. He can calm those nerves and that anxiety. If you're facing something that just seems, you know, just you don't know what you're going to do, pray and ask because he wants us to ask him for help and he will lead us and guide us and he will let us hear his voice whether that's directly into our heart whether he shares a word through somebody who's close to you and it confirms something that you're feeling in your heart that's the Lord speaking with you as well because sometimes it can be hard if you're a new believer to know what the voice of God sounds like what the voice of the Lord sounds like and so I just I guess I want to read a couple of more scriptures that are from a promises book. And you know what? There's a couple of these. You can just find these on Amazon or bookstore or whatever. God's promises and answers. And, and I have a little one too that just literally has Bible verses and topics. And so I'm going to read some really short scriptures that can help you stand on some promises regarding facing troubles. And what I like to do when I'm reading, when I mean standing on promises, I mean I'm reading a scripture and I know it's the Holy Spirit inspired word of God for me that I can put in my heart. And how do I put that in my heart? I read it first quietly because I, I like to learn a couple of different ways. I read it quietly and then I speak it out loud. And then I try to memorize it because if I can memorize it, I can just be driving around in my car and thinking about that scripture over and over again and meditating on certain words in that verse. And it really kind of hits my heart a couple of different ways when I do that. So any way that works for you, but just reading faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God and we can hear it if we speak it out loud, there's power in our words. Proverbs even says that, oh my goodness, 
We won't go there right now. I'm going to read these promises right now in troubles, okay? The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. That's from Nahum 1.7. This is from 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. The Apostle Paul wrote that, and he was no stranger to hardships and persecution and every single kind of hard, troubling time you can imagine. He endured torture and persecution and shipwrecks and died and came back to life. And at the end, he was a martyr for Jesus, but he gave the ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life for Christ, but he gave us the letters, the, um, the letters of the New Testament that are the gospel of Jesus. And he had a revelation from Jesus. So thank God for his obedience. And thank God that during those troubling times, he just didn't throw in the towel and give up. He, he really is such an example. Like, I don't know if I'm in Paul's shoes, if I could actually stand firm and be that courageous and be that bold and even give my life if I were in that situation. That's really terrifying to think about. But I would trust that the Holy Spirit will give me strength in anything I face, no matter how small it is or how great it is, that I can just trust him the way Paul did. That inspires me to think about what he went through. Sidebar, there's a really cool movie about the Apostle Paul as well, and I don't know what it's called, but man, it's cool. Okay, Psalms 138, 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. Who's sitting at the right hand of God the Father? Jesus. For Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, for we do not have a high priest who can't sympathize with our weakness, I said this before, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. God is a loving heavenly father. He loves us. If you ever watch, you know, a parent with a little child at a park, you see the, the dad and the little kid. The dad's pushing the kid on the swing and taking care of that little child. And that little child holds their daddy's hand and walks through the park just trusting that daddy's going to watch out for me, right? Well, that's how our Heavenly Father is to us too. He's not looking to cause harm to us and just, all right, I'm waiting for you to fall right now. Come on, let's do it. He's not like that. He loves us and he wants the best for us. And he wants to hear our prayers. He wants to see our tears. He wants to hear us be frustrated. <laughs> Don't be afraid to talk to God honestly about how you're feeling. Sometimes we Christians can just be a little bit, I don't know what the word is about our, our feelings sometimes like, oh, I, I'm not going to tell God that because I don't, I don't want God to think I'm not living in faith or really believing. I mean, he knows our thought before we even think it. He knows what we're going to say before we say it. Psalms 139, something, something, something. <laughs> I mean, he made us, right? So let's just go ahead and be honest with our Heavenly Father and tell him how we're feeling about everything. Mainly because it gets us out, gets it out of us. It's better to talk to God about how we're feeling about things than to go around talking to our friends about, you know, that does nothing. That does nothing beneficial. All it does is kind of pour gasoline on the, the fire that's already festering inside of us if we're frustrated about something. It's not doing anything productive, okay? And if you have a really godly friend who's grounded in the word and wisdom and you can be completely open with them and just share any kind of emotion like that, that person is going to give back to you peace and share some things that are going to calm you, not feed into that, okay? <laughs> All right? So be careful who you talk to about your feelings and, and what you're going through because not trying to spread gossip about your personal things and not trying to talk negatively about other people, not trying to do all that. We're just trying to really just feed our heart peace and go run to the Father when we have our problems. That is the one who's going to hear us and help us the most, more than any human, honestly, <laughs> in my experience. Keep on going. Matthew 6.34, my favorite. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I think I said Matthew 6.28.
Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Oh, don't be troubled. Let not. We have a choice to let it or let it not. Let's let it not, okay? It feels a lot better when we just let not our heart be troubled. We can go there. We can just, nah, but don't do it. It doesn't cause any good good feelings. It doesn't cause peace. It just causes more and more anxiety. And we want to stay in a place of perfect peace, okay? And if we are trusting in our Father and trusting in Jesus as our best friend, He's taking care of us. I just can't say it enough. I mean, it seems redundant, but it's really not. We just need to be reassured of this. Romans 8.28, for we know that all things, all things, not some things, only those things, all things work together for good to those who love God. Do you love God? Yeah, then all things are going to work together to those who are called according to his purpose. He's got a calling for your life. He's got a calling for my life. He created you. He knows every hair on your head. He knows all of your days. He knows everything about you. And he cares about you. He thinks you're precious. He has a plan for you and he wants to lead you and guide you in that day by day. Psalms 31, 7, I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy for you have considered my trouble and you have known my soul in adverse and have known my soul in adversities. And so he knows what we're going through. He cares about us. He shares his grace and his mercy with us in our times of trouble. Psalms 121, 1 and 2, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. Oh my gosh, when we think about like the creator of heaven and earth and the entire universe lives inside of us, right? That's crazy. Of course he cares for us. We're his most precious creation. Okay, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. That's beautiful. That's hard to do sometimes. I like to... Uh, I like to carry the load. I like to be responsible for my own stuff. I don't like to burden other people. I don't like to delegate because a lot of things I do, I only know how to do because of these very specific things that I'm doing in my job. So my husband's my co-partner in crime. He helps me <laughs> with my job when I finally give him a task. Hey, you know Excel spreadsheets way better than I do. Can you help me just throw that on a spreadsheet. He'll do it in like four seconds. It takes me like four hours. And so, but it's hard for me to give up and cast that care and just say, I'm going to put that on your desk, God. I'm really caring about that too much right now. And I can't, I can't shoulder the burden. It's weighing down my heart. So I'm putting it on your desk. I'm going to let you just handle it. I'm going to walk away now. And then I intentionally tell my heart, nope, we put that on the desk. God's taking care of that, okay? Walk away and go do something else. Oh boy, it's a lot of work keeping our mind right, right? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. God of all comfort. If you need comfort, if you need sympathy, if you need peace, if you need care, he is the God of all comfort to have that for you. And the Holy Spirit brings that to you because he is our comforter who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are also in any trouble with the comfort with which our, we find ourselves comforted by God. What a beautiful scripture. I have not read that in a really long time. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. That's like hitting me in the heart right now. Goodness sakes. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. I mean, I basically want to like airbrush this on my wall. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the God and the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Wow, that's it's just it's really comforting. Those are just little nuggets of truth that you can write down and you can Google like you can or don't use Google. Don't use Google. Um, <laughs> but I'm telling you, there's some hope, there's some truth, and I hope that's helped you today. And it's just me just sharing my own life and my own walk and 
hopefully it can help and just love you guys and want to be encouraging and Jesus is the one that helps us through our troubles and it's our only responsibility to just keep our mind in check by remembering whose we are we are the kid of a king who loves us very much right let's remember that and then to keep our heart meditating on his word day and night because then when we get in those things and those circumstances happen we're really just firmly planted on the rock which is Jesus and we're not going to be cast to and fro by all of these things but we're standing firm we don't have to know the outcome right now we don't have to have all the answers but just trusting and I know that's hard but we'll stay at peace if we can do that and we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see the goodness of God happening time and time again I have too many stories to testify to that so God bless you all and thank you so much for watching today